So what does it mean? What does it mean that the aliens are here? What does that mean? What's going to happen to us? Well, um, well, one 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 way to to uh, to mention to like is like one one way to look at it is the mind calendar. Mind calendar is a spiral calendar. It started at the beginning of time. It goes out to the time where the Earth was created, and then it goes in 20 times less every time. Every, every next stage is 20 times shorter than the stage before it. And like coincidentally, or not coincidentally, it, the New Age actually happened where New Ages on the Earth happened, like one of the great extinction events, like when the uh, dinosaurs died and the mammals came, that was one of its times. And then one of the most recent times was 3100 BC, which is where, um, you know, a lot of them say like, world began, civilization we began. Now that's the Mayan calendar, Mayan Mexico. That's also 3100 BC is where all of the uh, civilizations actually in the old world, the Sumerians first popped up. So why did the Sumerian civilization pop up the same exact year that the Mayans say that the earth, that the earth was created? Is that a coincidence? <laughs> and then the next one after that, because it's 20 times less, was back in 1738 or something like that, right in the middle of the industrial kind of event where the, uh, the you know, new worlds were being created and monarchies were being overthrown. Biggest, biggest event uh, in, in our written history um, when America is starting to pop up. And then the next one after that was 1998, and that was when, that was basically when computers started to take over. And then the next one's going to be in 2012, because they get 20 times short. Now, um, 2012, what I... See, I get all of my information, I probably should have said this before, but I get all of my information, I was a window washer last summer, and uh, so I was listening to Coast to Coast on MP3, so I've heard all the, all the, uh, all the uh, explanations from all these different people. David Wilcox is a good one, he's, he's a researcher, he, he explains it pretty well. But um, basically in 2012 uh, is a time where the, all the, the stars will align from the center of the galaxy in a certain way that it will be able to shoot a certain kind of energy into us, into our DNA, change our DNA, turn us into uh, mutants, which will then um, create new races and open us up to be able to use the rest of our brain to communicate telepathically, look into our past lives, and um, be extra intelligent so that we can actually see eye to eye with aliens. So the aliens are coming back here because ever since World War II, we were capable of destroying our civilization and they didn't want that to happen because they wanted to take advantage of 2012 uh, so that they could actually come back to the earth um, for a long time i think earth has kind of been enveloped by uh, evil energy and so other aliens weren't allowed to come here because they just needed us to uh, cycle through it our, our own by ourselves for a little bit and so now they're here and the arcturians i think they're our keepers they're these little guys from the arcturus star uh, which makes sense because arcturus is a very old star so they've had a lot more time to uh, develop. And then you have the Pleiadians and the Syrians who are kind of like more like us. Um, they look just like us, only they're a lot, they live 700 years and they're a lot stronger than us and uh, smarter than us with better technology. They're also looking after us too. Uh, I think they're kind of more like our brothers though, whereas the Arcturians would be kind of like the keepers, the ones who make sure that everything goes smoothly. And they, they, they're the ones who've been like fusing our, our, uh, warheads together, making sure that we can't blow each other's up, which they said that they've helped us numerous times. We would have blown ourselves up by now if it hadn't been for them. And um, so, 2012. Uh, I think that's when, that's when people in these developed countries um, will actually have to explain, believers will have to, ex I mean, non-believers will have to explain to the believers Whereas now it's the believers have to explain to the non-believers. Like I think people by then are going to actually start to believe. And then by 2020 to 2025, that's when everybody's going to believe. And, and once everybody believes, I think that's when the aliens can actually land and then live amongst us. Uh, I think that's, I don't think that's a stretch. I think we're going to actually live with aliens and be able to fly to other planets, maybe even two. Um, but obviously we have to get along with ourselves too. You know, if you can't handle, say, if you want to be angry with me and like insult me just because I believe differently from you, you're obviously not ready to have some alien hang out with some alien and look a lot stranger than I am. So we basically have to be able to see eye to eye, know how to argue with each other, know how to uh, 
how to take each other seriously um, and uh, get along with each other. So that's basically, I think, the most important thing about the Earth. I mean, forget forget global warming, forget forget all these petty little things we like to argue over and over again. Um, you know, involving money. The base, basically, the thing we really need to work on is getting along with each other. So, um, so then the aliens come, and I mean, I it'd be great to think about what the world will be like like that. I mean, ooh, I'd love to fly to the moon and jump off of a big 100-foot diving board and dive into a pool and do flips off of it because the gravity will be less and then and then see all of the uh, ruins on Mars and walk around them. And, and, you know, we'll probably be able to terraform Mars. So we're already thinking about terraforming Mars. Um, grow plants there that can create an atmosphere and then maybe do some kind of thing with the microwave thing that could create water out of thin air. I mean, the, the Syrians do that because it's all just a code. Anyway, our bodies are code. DNA, you can, you can uh, tweak DNA to create any animal you want. Uh, body's just a, just a machine. And I think you can do the same thing with objects too, you know. I think we'll be able to, well actually scientists are saying you can, but invent a, a microwave. You type in, I want a hamburger, out of thin air, you got a hamburger. It just takes all the constituents out of, maybe you have like a bar that has all of the different minerals. And then it would suck it out of that bar and create the hamburger. So I think we'll have those. I think we'll have cell palette communication. We'll be able to see in our past lives. We'll be able to live like 700 years. Because living 80, 90 years, that's just not enough. You know, I don't want to live just 80 or 90 years. I want to live at least 200 years, you know. After that, I'd like to live longer, like 700 years, you know, before I'm ready to kick it and start over again. Um, and... Uh, yeah, that's like the thing I said about reincarnation. Like, uh, it's actually good that we die because then you have to, you can restart. You know, grumpy old people, they, they're no fun to be around. They're still set in their ways. Their brains are fused in these certain ways. You gotta die and get reborn again. So anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, everybody will have uh, let's see, flying cars with anti gravity. The aliens will let us have the anti gravity, which uh, I can explain anti gravity too. Um, yeah, maybe I'll explain that later on another one. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's basically what I think. Flying cars, internet on your on your watch, RFID tags, they're great. So that's what, that's what we've got in the future. Kind of hard to imagine. I don't think it's, yeah, let's not think about it too much. Let's just think about trying to, the here and now a little bit. <laughs> the issues. All right.